Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Demonologist UK podcast. Welcome everybody from mediums to parapsychologists to demonologist healers, angel workers. Welcome everybody to this week's show. I'm very excited this week's show. We have Sean Irving all the way over from Tennessee in America. I'm really, 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 really looking forward to this one. It's going to be a great show. Um, out to Robbie and Emma already locked in. Just got a few announcements I've got to make first just before we start the live stream. Just to let you know, this is my last one before the new year, so I will be back in the new year. I'm going to pop up and do a couple of um, like random live streams, but um, really and truly, it is literally the last show. I've, I mean, I've, I've done a video yesterday of all the people that I've got booked out. Um, I just got confirmed today I've got Kay Maloney coming on so really really cool to have that happening um, a couple of more announcements don't forget to check out the official sponsors of the podcast and the live stream that is Journey of Spirit and the National Paranormal Inv Investigators UK head over to their Facebook page um, so yeah welcome everybody along it's going to be a great show tonight I'm really really looking forward to this one um, we've got Sean Irving on. I'm just going to quickly uh, get myself ready and get myself sorted. Now, just to introduce Sean. Sean is from Tennessee in America. He's been practicing Wickham now for about 20 years, um, which is a long time. So we're going to be talking to him about that. He's always been into the paranormal, but he also grew up in a haunted home. So we're going to be talking to him about that. Um, he's also runs a, a, a paranormal team called the Knox County Spirit Chasers. Travelled to a few places over there in America um, where we, we'll talk to him about all the things that he's done over there and things like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's get Sean on the show and let's uh, let's get this conversation underway. Let's get this podcast going. So Sean, are you, can I hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, brilliant. It's good to see you on. You're on live now. How are you doing? I'm oh, not too bad, not too bad. I'm, I've got over my Christmas stress. I've got all my presents done, and I'm ready and waiting now. <laughs> I just got a few more to go, and then it's finally done and over with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas is one of them stressful times, and it? it is one of them stressful times. Oh yes, that's why I'm like after Christmas, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had a really bad year so far, so I'm hoping that Christmas is a little bit of a better one. <laughs> I'm, I'm really I agree. hoping. So, Sean, let's 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 talk about things. Let's talk about you in general. Now, in your bio, you read up there that you uh, grew up in a haunted home. Can you sort of explain that a little bit further for us? Like, I mean, what were things like when you was there, and well, how did it start? Um, yeah, um, it was a house. Um, I think we moved in when I was about fifteen. Yeah. Um, and the energy in the home, anyway, like period, was like it was just very off. Yeah. Um. And there'll be times, like, especially when you're home alone, you would hear all, like, conversations going on in other rooms. And you can't really quite make out what they was talking about. And then you go in that room, there'll be no one there. Wow. And a uh, family dog, it would, there'll be times it would go in certain parts of the room and just start growling and just start bark barking at, at nothing there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just very uneasy and... I had never like actually like I'd never seen like a manifestations or an apparition that you just hear things and yeah. you can you can just feel it. Yeah, I mean they say that the the um the main sort of source of paranormal um, see is not seeing it's hearing and smelling. So for you to sort of hear these sort of sounds coming from other rooms and you going in there and realizing there's no one there, I mean it must have frightened you at that age. Did did, did it affect you in any way growing up? Um, well, it was scary, but it also opened my mind to where I wanted to know more. Yeah. Like, I've always, like, I've always claimed myself as a skeptic believer. I believe in it, but I also want to see proof, too. Yeah. Um, so it opened up my mind to want to learn more, and, um, because I've always, death always fascinates me. Like, I want to know what happens after we die. Like, yeah. where do we go? What is that place? Um, mm. And that's, I just recently fully got into the paranormal about two years ago. Yeah. Um, cause I actually had a friend and she, she was into the paranormal as well. And it felt good to have someone to experience the stuff with. Yeah. that's sort of like share, sharing in the passion for finding out what it is actually that is, is out there. Yeah. 
Mm. So, so your experiences when when you was growing up in this in this house, would, would you would you class the house as haunted, or would you just say it was residual energy? It was like the house sort of talking. Say, for instance, I think it, I think it would have been residual because, um, like I said, you never really saw anything. You could just feel it, and mm. you would hear things. And but as far as actually seeing anything, um, I never saw anything. So yeah. I just yeah. think the energy in the home was pretty much alive and it would manifest itself into like noises and um, energy. Like like I said, the dog would go crazy when it go to certain rooms or certain corners. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, and many of my family members would feel the same. Like my sister woke up one night and the dog was just growling. Like it was just, it was laying on her chest growling at something. Wow. Okay, that that would freak me out definitely one hundred percent. Oh yes, and I know this like I never like nothing's never been like thrown or anything like that. Um, it's just mostly noises, sounds, and um, just you can just feel it. Yeah, yeah. So so with these sounds, were any of them like doppelganger sort of experiences in the sense of it was um, it sounded like someone you know, like either your sister or a family member. And um, sometimes, like you would like, especially when you're home alone, you would hear like your name being called from another room. Yeah. And it would always just sound like, yeah, it would always sound like my mom, oh, um, wow. or my grandmother, because my grandmother lived with us. She ended up moving in with us when her um, husband passed away. Yeah. Um. So, and also, it, it intensified when she moved in because her and my mom, they loved each other, but they, the personalities would collide. Yeah. With each other. Yeah. So. They they fought a lot too, mm. and that's obviously going to fuel the the energies in the house because if it's negative, it's going to feed off of that as well. So, do you think that maybe with what was happening between them two, actually sort of intensified? Did the did the um, did the the entity or or the the haunting there did it sort of amplify when this was happening? Um, it did a little bit. Um, you would. It was just like the energy, you could just feel the energy get more intense mm. um, because it, was, it started getting too really tense because I don't know if it's the energy you could feel between them two. Yeah. But yeah, you could just feel the atmosphere just get more tense and more dense and yeah. Mm. It, yeah. Was, it, was, it, it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in a haunted home and I met my partner through her home being haunted at the time and it, it's an experience that changes your life. It's something that... It, it, it opens your eyes um, to what the possibilities out there and like you said it, it made you think to yourself you know what what happens when we die I mean do you think that's the reason why you got into this whole paranormal path the fact that what you experienced when you were younger or is it something that's always been sort of playing on your mind and you've always wanted to know um, I think it's a little bit of both um and it just got more intense. Like the um, older I got, the more I wanted to know. Yeah. But it, um, that pretty much that experience did open my eyes to well, you know, I wanted to know a little bit more. Mm. And it eventually, like I could point to, I studied. I started studying different type of religions, religions and because I was raised Southern Baptist. Well, um, you might have to explain that to me because I, I mean, where 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 I'm from it is literally you have. You have Christians, you have Catholics, you have Jehovah's Witnesses. They're all sort of branches of Christianity. Is that the same thing as with Southern Baptist? A little bit, but it's like very strict by the Bible. It's like you do anything wrong, it's like you know God's going to punish you. Type. It's like very backwoods country type. Oh, okay. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, and my church is pretty intense. Like everything you did is pretty much a sin and. Um, you know, God, like once they start really getting deep into God's going to punish you for pretty much anything you do, yeah. um, that's when I also I start to open my eyes. I'm like, I don't think this religion is for me. Yeah, no, that, um, that's, that's good. So, between that and the paranormal going on in my life, it's like that's when I started studying. I studied a little bit about Buddhism, which I still love. I still love some of the Buddhism teachings. Yeah. And then I came across. Um, Paganism and studied mm -hmm. paganism and um, Wicca. And once I started studying Wicca, I was like, I started feeling more connected to that. Yeah. Um, 
So that um, I really got deep into that, and I ended up having friends that was Wiccan too, and I studied with them as well, and been a practicing Wiccan ever since. Yeah, I mean, in the sense of studying Wiccan, do you study the modern style of Wiccan, or do you try and sort of stay with the old, uh, the pagan teachings? Because there, there is a, a a big difference between the two. Yes, um, I do mix a little bit. Um, I know. Um, I do mix a lot of the older teachings with the new because I know Wicca itself is still a new religion. So it was um, made in the 1950s by Jared. Um, yeah. Hopefully, I pronounced his last name yeah. correctly. Jared yeah. yeah. Uh, That's it. I and, think it's about as close as I've ever come to pronouncing it, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> so, it's like the religion itself is based off of older religions. I know mm. there's a little bit of um, the old paganism teachings in it, um, yeah. a little bit of Native American. But I do um, mostly like the old ways. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, with, uh, the older ways seem to be it seem to work better in my eyes from from the evidence that I've seen. Um, um, it, it works really well. Kathy's saying her daughter's just turned pagan this year, and it's very interesting to learn about. And that's 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 why I wanted to talk to you about it. You know, because if you look at the literal term of paganism before. Christianity was formed by the Council of Nicaea in 341 AD. It just meant somebody who worshipped more than one god. I mean, it, how do you see paganism yourself? Mm. Well, I do. I do believe in the whole entire, um, the um, many gods and goddesses, but I also believe they are all manifestations of the one true divine. Yeah. Um, because you go through many different um, cultures, um, Greek, Roman, and so forth, they have these names for other beings, other gods and goddesses, but I think they're all manifestations of the one true being. Yeah. Um, so, because it is a religion that embraces both the feminine and the masculine side of things in nature, because yes. you can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I do worship um many gods but i do not believe um that are manifestations of the one true yeah yeah because we, we I mean wiccan itself is a that is a is a religion based around nature isn't it where yes. and, and i think pagan sort of paganism sort of follows in that footsteps but it's, it's a bit more sort of i don't know how to put it it's a bit it's a, it's, it's it's a little bit more less natural and more towards superstition does that make sense Yes, mm. and I mean, with with paganism in itself, it, it's it's I've I've read a lot, a lot of books into paganism, and it is a very interesting um, religion to look at and to to see from the outside. But practicing paganism, it must be something that's quite difficult, especially in the current day and age that we live in, in the modern era, because of all the distractions that are around. That is true, and plus, I know. Um... The witch hunts and all that's over with but there's still a lot of people that yeah when you mention you know paganism with uh the occult witchcraft and stuff like that yeah. like they still they give you that like i look like oh okay yeah it still sort of um, carries that stigmata doesn't it from the whole salem witch yes. trials from the the Azizis back in the time in england where we chased all them and then witches down and we used to dunk them and i i get that i mean with the whole paganism and the wiccan it, it does carry like i said that stigma i mean do you come across that a lot when you because you I mean when i asked you for a bio you sent it over straight away and you said i've been practicing wicca for 20 years you seem very out about being a, a wiccan and practicing the wiccan and paganism do you get a lot of stigma when you mention it to other people um i do a little bit not really bad yeah. But they, I mean, some people will give you that like look, like yeah, yeah. you know, like they think it's strange. Yeah. Um, and I've like even with a few of my customers because I, I, I do wear my pentagram around my neck, I'm not scared to show it. Yeah, um, I do have some people that are like, Is that a pentagram? I'm like, Yeah, and they just stand there and give you the look, like, Okay, mm. <laughs> I'm like, You, you be you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, leave me to, to be me. I mean, I, I mean. I've always been that way inclined when it comes to people. You know, if if you choose to 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 follow a path in life, it's not for me to tell you any different. I mean, I can sit here and I can spill out a load of stuff about demonology and that, and get and and, and expect you to believe in demons. But at the end of the day, it's down to your own personal choice. And I think that's what people have to understand. 
um, Louisa has just said on the chat that there's a lot of branches of paganism um, and Norse paganism has been a big resurgence. I mean, do you have a certain sect of paganism that you practice? Uh, not really. I'm all, I'm very eclectic. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't follow, like, like even, like, gods and goddesses, I don't follow a true, like, um, like Greek, Greek or Roman or Egyptian. I just... Whatever, whatever I can, whatever I feel connected to, yeah. um, that's mm -hmm. what I do. It's probably because um, I've to always be, yeah. kept an open mind. I've yeah. always kept an open mind, and mm -hmm. it's just so many that, they, which is true. There's so many branches of it, and it's too many to follow. So that's why I always stay open. Yeah, and it's it's always good to follow the follow where where the feeling leads you. I mean, if you're, you're talking about paganism and Wiccan, it's a it's a religion that celebrates the fact that you're you're individual and it celebrates the, the the inner feelings and the way the subconscious works. So, to sort of have that sort of mindset that you're going to follow what you feel connected to is almost more true to that religion than following a set standard. Yes. Definitely. I mean, with your paganism, your your Wicca and that is, you know, because I'm trying to get my head around it. I want the listeners out there to sort of understand the way it is. Do you guys? I know because it's Christmas time. Do you still celebrate Christmas? Do you have certain times of the year where you have to do celebrations and stuff like that? Yes, um, I do. I do still um, celebrate Christmas because I do. I, I do have family and yeah. Um, they still practice Christmas and mm -hmm. um, that. So I do like to mix a little bit of both together in there. Yeah. Um, so I do celebrate normally like I do with my family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, you, so when we talk about paganism and Wiccan and, and, the, and the actual the celebration of Christmas do you do you sort of see it in the same way that, that people the other people do you know it's like a celebration of, of, of Jesus's birth and that but do you sort of see it more as a family sort of thing and, and sort of a more of a cleansing sort of ritual more than a celebration of somebody's life um, I think it's I, I just claim it as more you know getting together with family and yeah you know an excuse, just, excuse for a good drink up and a good party and a good chin wag or a chat with everybody in it. <laughs> yes, because that's pretty much that's pretty much what it is. Like, because it was always a big thing for my family in general, especially my grandmother. Mm. She loved Christmas. Yeah, nans are um, like that. Nans are definitely like that. They do love a bit of Christmas. Yeah, she would go crazy all out. Like, she loved decorating. She just loved being with her family for one. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I do still celebrate Christmas with my family, but I do still have my beliefs that I, I do my own thing. And um, they're asking do, on the chat. Of... Sorry, Sean. They're asking on the chat. Um, will you be doing anything for Winter Solstice this year? Um, just a, I'm probably going to do like a little small, um, like just by myself because I haven't been going around too many people. Mm. Um, my gathering this year was very small. Yeah. Um, it's only going to be my mom um, and her husband and my partner and my um, mother in law, and that's that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's because of this whole COVID yeah. thing. They, they, I mean, you can't you can't have the sort of gatherings you had before. Um, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, I my my auntie is a practicing Wiccan, and so is my mum, and they done a ritual with my partner once where they wrote their um what was it was did they wrote did you write down your thoughts and feelings oh your negatives and then you threw them in the fire and it's supposed to cleanse is is you did it at halloween is, is it like a is that is that a wiccan practice or is that a pagan practice um actually i've actually done that before um yeah um i think it's it's probably a pagan practice because um, mm -hmm. I do it myself. Um, except I do it on um, bay leaves. Yeah. Um, you write um, your intentions on a bay leaf or things you want to get rid of. Yeah. And then you burn it, and it's supposed to um, release it in the smoke and get okay. rid of it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've, I've I've done that before, just a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah. That's um, I've, I've had I've had heard that a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, uh, 
I just wanted to ask you because obviously practicing Wiccan for 20 years is something that is, it's, it's sort of, I, I, I'm one of these people that I think knowledge is power but only applied knowledge you know what I mean oh yeah I agree with you like I still feel like this every day there's so much I still need to know like there's so much yeah. learning yeah because um, I feel like no one never truly knows everything like even with the paranormal it's like I still claim myself as a newbie yeah because um, I feel like there's still so much I need to know and um, that's why I do get together with other people that's experienced in the field. Yeah, yeah. So if we, yeah, moving on to that, like you've just started. Well, you're not started. You, you you've got your team, Knox County Spirit Chasers. Um, where, where, where so so with the Knox County Spirit Chasers, is it something that you sort of just went right? This is the next step for us, or is, was it just a a brand new sort of idea? You went, oh, I'm 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 gonna Joe, you know I'm gonna follow this paranormal path and I'm going to see where it takes me and it was follow the paranormal path because me and my friend first when we um, went on our first ghost hunt it was to the Thomas house it's in Red Bull in Spring Tennessee in the US yeah. um, and it was our first going to an actual haunted place and stay in the night oh, okay. and we done that a few times and I was like you know what it'd be nice to have our own group yeah. Um, to where we can go out and investigate other places and eventually if once we you know once we not learn the ropes and stuff like that you know help people that that you know that might have stuff going on in the home and want someone to come in and investigate it yeah um so it's basically started after that um, and we live in knox county so it's like why not you know knox county spirit chasers yeah um and then we started getting together designing a logo and everything and we finally came across a logo that we liked and we have a friend that does i don't know what they call it they monogram shirts or whatever you call it yeah um so we had him to get us a few t-shirts to wear when we go out and investigate um which is sad because we haven't done much this year because yeah. a lot of things we wanted to do we can't because she's very cautious i mean she's she won't leave the house unless she really really has has to yeah um because she works from home because her office is closed until um this calms down a little bit so she just stays at home and works from there yeah um but yeah i had so many places lined up for this year and they all had to get canceled because covid decided to poof Pop up. <laughs> yeah, it did, it did, and it took everybody by surprise. I mean, I've had, I mean, I think this is week nineteen now. I think I had nineteen guests on the show. There's not one person that says that they had so many things planned, but COVID just ruined it for them. I mean, it's 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 one of them things. It's you can't plan for it. But what's what's the scariest place you've ever been to? What where where have you ever had? Where did you have your best experience? Explain to us what that was. Oh God. Um... It was, I think it was Thomas House, um, mm. since that, that was my first haunted location. I mean, it was intense. Um, besides the house I lived in, but going to the Thomas House, it was, because this house, it used to be, I think it used to be like an old hotel. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, when you go to this town, this town is so small. Yeah, you you hit a black zone to where no cellular service works, <laughs> um, right. and it's like literally going back into time. Mm. And when you get to this hotel, it's you, you can feel the energy the moment you get on the property. Yeah. Um, but no, there's a church across the street, um, because there's the hotel and the church across an old church across the street. Yeah. Um, so we went to the old church one night and. The story of it, um, there's two different stories we've heard of it. Um, okay. One was the preacher was taking money from the church. Oh, wow. Okay. And he ended up hanging himself. And another one was he, um, not to sound bad, but it, he started, he would touch like the children. Ah, so he was molesting and, children, yeah. Yes. And yeah. that's when people found out, and that's when he hanged himself inside the church. So there's two right. stories we heard, um, but you can really feel what the energy and when it's go into that church. Um, yeah. And one night we was there, we just turned all the um, lights out and just had the full spectrum lights going and the um, 
um, infrared lights going. And yeah. I don't know if my eyes was playing tricks on me, but um, I could see a dark shadow moving across the wall. Right. <laughs> and I, don't, I was like, I, I, it's like you try to focus your eyes in and out. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And yeah. it was just very scary because it's my first time mm. seeing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one one night, the door just flew open into the church. It just flew open. Oh. And oh, yeah. this is a door um, because it doesn't have any door handles on it anymore. So to keep it closed, you have to put like. Um, chains around it to keep it closed oh, okay. so it doesn't open back up yeah but yeah it just flung open even oh. with the chains on it, it just went through the chain and just flung right open well the, the chains, chains just, the chains just, actually broke off as it opened up um they just dislocated themselves um because wow. it wasn't locked into place but yeah it just flung open even with the chains holding it, it still didn't stop the door from flinging open wow it sounds um, like so a that was really a very, really cool place it really does you know what i mean yes I love this place because that's why I've been there often because yeah. I know I've read before well if you visit a location often eventually like the spirits get used to you and you'll see more happen yeah yeah um, I mean, yeah yeah because you're not going to get something every night you go no you're not um, but no I love this place because you I actually stay overnight in this place um right and it's it's a nice place I love it because it has so much history um it, mm. Like there's so many things manifesting the energy like it's um it used to be a indians used to come through there so it's built on that um the road they used to come through right. um and there was an underground spring that runs up under it oh, okay right yeah um so it has all these amplifiers mm. it might be and... a good idea to check out um there is oh, oh joe i'll find the website for you and i'll send it over to you there's a website um which shows you the ley lines that run through certain parts um close to you but the way it sounds okay. the fact that there's a road going through there and you have the springs they might be cross ley lines there and that's why the energy is so intense when you walk in there but i'll send you the website over yeah they're great mm. and you're but talking yeah, about the, the 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 guy committing suicide i mean if you look at especially religion in itself suicide is seen as one of the greatest sins so oh, yeah. that energy is going to be amplified definitely you know what i mean at that that, that location yeah because like the other place i wanted to really go to um i was actually ready to i was actually scheduled to go to um waverly hills sanitarium oh it's wow in kentucky yep I and know Waverly I've, Hills, yeah. <laughs> I dreamed of that location ever since I was 18 and I first saw it, saw it on Ghost Hunters. Yes, um, yes. And I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I want to go there. And I had the chance to actually go and <laughs> COVID happened. Uh, oh, wow. Waverly Hills is like, you're a lot closer than I am. So it's <laughs> you, you've got more of an opportunity to get there, but it's in my top three. And I think all my top three in America, because you've got Waverly Hills Sanatorium, Eastern State Penitentiary is another one. And I've always wanted to do the Sally House as well. Which one's that one, the Sally House? The Sally House, it's the, uh, I can't remember exactly where it is. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be a cheat and I'm going to Google it while I'm talking. Uh, but yeah, it, the story yeah, it behind, the, yeah, the, the story behind the Sally House, is supposedly a doctor conducted, um, uh, so I think she had um, something wrong with her leg and he conducted this, an operation in this house on a child without using um, the proper chemicals to, to, to stop her from feeling it. And um, she passed away, and supposedly Sally now. Oh, it's in Kansas. There you go. It's in it's in Atchison in Kansas, and supposedly when you see the little girl in the house, you can see the doctor standing behind her. It's almost like a shadow figure standing behind her. Oh wow. Mm. I've always wanted to do that. And Eastern State Penitentiary is up there with Waverly Hills as well. I, mean, I can't believe you had the opportunity to, I mean I hope hopefully when this COVID's over you get a chance to go there and just and if you can send me over any of the evidence you collect that would be absolutely fantastic yeah most definitely mm. in another place I've always wanted to go to like one of my top places is um, I've always wanted to go to Dracula's, Dracula's Castle 
Castle Bran um, in Romania. Yes. Yes, that's the one, yeah. Yes, it's, it's on my top it's on my top ten. <laughs> There's a really cool story behind that, actually, that a lot of people don't know about, is that, that Castle Bran in Romania during the Second World War was also used by the Germans as a secret subdivision of paranormal uh, intelligence, and they were trying to create the super soldier by putting um, evil entities inside soldiers, and that's the reason why people think it's so haunted. Uh-huh. Mm. I, I, I read that in a, I read that randomly on a website one day and I was just like wow that makes so much sense now <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's because I saw it on oh god I, I can't remember the name of the show it's been forever I don't think the show is even around anymore yeah um, but, but they send people just like normal people signs that produce um, yeah. A lot of these like haunted locations, yeah. And they film. They have cameras on them, so people get to see all these different views of where they're at. Right. Um, and I saw it on that, and I was like, "This place looks. It looks creepy." I'm like, "I want to go there." It's huge. It's huge. I work with a guy at work, um, and he's Romanian, and he lives just outside the village where Brian Castle is. And he went back there um, a few weeks ago. And he took some pictures, and it, it's it's massive. It's such a big castle. It's huge, and the, the history behind it as well is another thing. You know, you got the whole thing about Vlad Dracul. You got the whole thing with World War Two. I mean, you, you, you said you were saying about going to this church. Do you think history has a massive part in playing with um, the activity, the paranormal activity in, in a location? I think I, I believe it does because if you think about all the tragedy that, or anything like. Um, especially this a uh, place where there's a lot of tragedy throughout history. I mean, it's gonna all that energy is gonna build up and yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I agree with you that one. I also think that, that, that as much as history plays its part as well, we ha- like you said, it has to have tragedy there. You have to have those apparitions that are stuck there with their unfinished business for it to be for a place to be so haunted. Yeah, and especially like if someone's evil in life and. Mm. They they die. I mean, of course, they're going to be evil in death. And yeah. Um, yeah, and especially like it depends on like like if someone's sh- was shot there. Of course, there's going to be that like energy there. Um, in, yeah, yeah. I no, think no. of words to say. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I I agree with you. I mean, I, I've built a career dealing with negative. So <laughs> I agree with you there. You know, if, if these things don't happen, then I, I'm out of a job. So <laughs> it's great to have them there. Um, so you, you're saying as well that you're, you're quite skeptical when it comes to the paranormal. I mean, you've, you've experienced shadow people, you've experienced noises growing up in haunted house. I mean, when you say skeptical, is it because you haven't experienced these things yet? Or is it because you turn to science before you turn to a paranormal answer? It's, I think it's a little bit of both. Like, um, I think, like, I, I do sit back and think, okay, could have my eyes been trading tricks on me? Because I'm still, like, even with all the equipment I've been accumulating, it's like, I still, I've only gotten a few EVPs, but I still have yet to actually get, like, a picture. Yeah. Um, like, even with the EVPs, it's like, those makes me think, oh my. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I, I do believe in the paranormal, but I'm still trying. I guess you can say I'm still trying to find that ultimate proof. Yeah, the smoking gun, as they called it. Yeah, the one that you just see, like, oh my god, it just blows you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to send you over a few pictures, actually, Sean, because I mean, I started life as a paranormal investigator, and I had an experience uh, a place over here called Harwich Redoubt Fort, which is an old um, World War Two fort. It was built as a sort of sort of a back sort of defence line in case the Germans come down the Thames Estuary and I had an experience there when I was locked in um, a haunted cell and a lower level demon come down from the ceiling towards me and, and the guy that I was with at the time who was a medium actually experienced it as well and it's what turned me to demonology um, wow. so I'd have to send you over a couple of pictures we got when we were out investigating because you, you, you'd you like them they're, they're, they're really good I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting them uploaded onto the page but I mean there's another one as well um, HAPRC they're, I think they're on my page as well they've got an evidence page have a look through that as well because they've got um, it, it's an extraterrestrial it's an actual um, apparition it's like a shadow image of an extraterrestrial 
I mean, oh, wow. yeah, it, it's it's really it's a really cool thing for you to sort of like have a look at. I um I will post a link to the evidence page on my page after. So if anybody who's listening in wants to have a look at that, Sean, have a look at that page. It's I think it's about halfway down, and to like see what you think of that one because that's quite that's as close to a smoking gun that I've seen for a little while. It, it's a definite head scratcher, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, like, even, like, I do hang, like, there's this one team that I've went on a few ghost hunts with. Um, yeah. They are called the um, Tennessee Wraith Tennessee Chasers. I've um, heard of them. I have heard of them. Um, I did, I think, I think I've been on a few, I think I've been on a few, I have heard of them i did i have been on a few places like, especially at the Thomas House, because they go there a lot. Yeah. Um, so I've been a part of that, and, yeah, they're, they they talk about experiences that opened them up opened our eyes like like you said smoking gun yeah um it opened our eyes like whoa yeah i mean it's i like the whole power unity when teams like get together like you went out with other teams and we used to go out of other teams it's that that power unity it's everybody getting together and sharing because we're all in it for one goal we're all out there to prove that what we know exists and prove that to the people that that don't know you know what I mean and we all do it for yeah. our own reasons like you said you go out you do it because you want to know what happens when you pass away I do it because I, I think I just do it because I'm I'm a bit of a weirdo really at the end of the day most people go out on a Friday night and have a dance and have a drink I sit and look at ghost pictures and deal with demon stuff you know <laughs> it's just the way things are uh, we're all different in our own way you know what I mean I'm the same way like I'll just sit there on the couch I'll have I'll be like I'll be trying to watch a movie, but I'll be on my phone looking at YouTube videos of people going <laughs> yeah. on ghost hunts and trying to watch the two at the same time and making a list of things I'm gonna go do. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. But if you if you ever need any help in investigations, you ever catch anything, you ever need any help, I mean, if I can't help you, I've got a a, a massive uh, group of us behind me that will be able to help you out and we're always here to help each other because we do um we do have um, a great support unit, all of us that, that sort of are in the circle. So if you ever need any help, just, just let us know. Um, Kathy's yeah, asking, yeah. have you ever had a communication with a Native American spirit? No. No? No, no. Would um, you, is that something you would like to have? Um, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm open-minded. And um, hmm. I have yet to experience anything yeah. from like a Native American standpoint. Mm. Um, but there's a few actually Native American things I actually want to do. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's quite it's quite fascinating the whole Native American thing because they are very spiritual people, aren't they? Oh yes, Extremely. yes. Um, there's something I actually love about like yeah um, Native American religion. I mean, I don't fully really know what they believe. I know they believe in like a great spirit and stuff like that. But yeah, they are very spiritual people in yeah like there's a lot of things i wanted to do like there's always like i've always wondered what it'd be like to um go to like a native american like vision quest yeah um i don't i don't know if yet is that if that's what you call it but um mm. like they can like the way they like sing and dance around and all these things is like they go on this like vision quest and i heard it is a very intense experience yeah i can imagine so yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've never really been being from England. We don't. I mean, you have to be into the Native American to sort of sort of deal with that side of things. But obviously, living in America, it's all around you, you know. So, yeah, I suppose it, it's it's more sort of in your face for you than it is for us over here on the other side of the pond. Do you know what I mean? Eventually, I want to make it on that side. <laughs> yeah, well, I, just, I mean, if over here we're we're all paranormal crazy over here i mean you, you go on facebook there's at least three or four live ghost hunts going on an evening like monday to sunday over here of, of uk people going out there and doing ghost hunts it's like highly contagious over here. everyone's doing it i mean i started i think i started my team back in 2003 and it sort of disbanded about i think it's like 2012 i think we've done it for about nine years and uh -huh. You know, and since then there was only a few teams then, but now there's just there's so many. You know, it's it's, it's just crazy. Um, Kathy saying grew up on a UK powwow circuit. You have to be invited to a ceremony. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take Kathy's word for that because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So. Yeah, I found my um, great grandmother. Um, I think she had a lot of Native American in her because I know I've heard stories of when she passed away, there was a big um, um, Native American, I don't know what they call it, but I guess ceremony for the dead. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of Native Americans there for her. Um, so I have it in my blood, even though it's probably a very small amount. Yeah. Because <laughs> I go out in the sun and I tan. I don't really tan, so <laughs> I burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like Scottish people over here. Sorry, Robbie, if you're locked in. Because <laughs> well, no, I, uh, I did that one thing for it, is that I did do that um, ancestry DNA thing, and it was really interesting. Yeah, I, I've, no, I've tried um, that. I did try that. I mean, I think it comes back that I'm like slightly Nordic and uh, I have German in me. And I mean, I'm just a big European cocktail, I think. So. <laughs> That's how mostly mine was actually like a, a lot of Welsh. Um, oh, I did Welsh. have a little bit of Scottish and a little bit of Irish, Irish in me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's mostly all European. Wow, wow, that's crazy. I think that that that's 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 mental. That's crazy. You wouldn't you wouldn't believe that. I think well, with a name like Sean, that's quite a, a Welsh name, isn't it? Yes, definitely. And I, I know mine's spelled. Um, S H A W. So I think, I think S E A N is the yeah, Sion. Uh, That's how they spell yeah, it. I think it's Sion, like yeah. Irish or Scottish or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm I'm not very good with all this whole you know, uh, names and where they come from and that. But yeah. it's, <laughs> I mean, I will take your word for it. I'll take your word for it, Sean. <laughs> you know how it goes but yeah um, so we're sort of coming towards the end of the show I do this sort of thing with all my guests that come on where I do something it sounds disgusting but it's not it's something called the big plug it's where I give you a chance to sort of advertise your Facebook page whatever events you've got going on um, and just tell the guys anything that you've got planned for the future because even if you're doing a Facebook live in the future but I just literally hand it over to you you can tell us your websites and that and you do it so let us know Sean how do we get hold of you guys over there in America um, well I do have a Facebook page right now it is called the Knox County Spirit Chasers mm -hmm. um, so far like I'm, I'm I am still got the Waverly Hills lined up for next year yeah um, if everything goes according to plan and nothing stops that um, yeah. I do plan on going to Waverly Hills and I am going to do a lot of it live and oh, okay. if I and then, of course, go over the um, any recordings I have, and I will be posting them on there too. Well, it is nice getting other people's opinion on what because you might hear something that I don't hear. Yeah. Um. Because I know after listening to recordings for thirty minutes, your mind just gets tired. Yeah. Um, definitely. But yeah, so far I just have the um the Facebook page. I do have a YouTube channel, but I don't have nothing on there yet. Yeah, no, no. Um, just, I just give us the link for it because at the end of the day, once this COVID sort of disappears, who knows how many videos you're going to put up there? So just stick it up there, mate. What's the web website? Um, it's oh god, it should be under my name. I think it's under my name, which is Sean Urban, um, yep. I R V I N. Um, and you'll see a picture of me and a friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. but it's under my name, so it, sh it should pop up that way. Yeah. Um, even though it's attached to my Knox County Spirit Chasers email address, yeah, um, which is Knox County Spirit Chasers at gmail dot com. Okay, okay. So if anyone's got any questions, they hit you up either on Facebook or they can email you. Um, it'd be great. I mean, it'd be absolutely great if when you do do Waverly Hills, if I can restream that onto my channel for everybody to watch. Yeah, um, most definitely. Oh, brilliant. I mean, that, that's going to be great. I mean, I am going to watch that one, definitely. When you go there, you're going to have to let me know because that place, it, it's amazing. I mean, everybody that's ever visited Waverly Hills Sanatorium has always come up, up, up away from there with an experience that literally terrifies them. Yeah, because I want to get it for the... Um, I know, like, a lot of these... No, one thing I can say about the paranormal is not a cheap hobby. No, um, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to get it for the whole entire night to where uh, it'll be less crowded. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to be me and a few people. Mm. 
Well, what we can do, if we can arrange it, Sean, when you do go to Waverly Hills, maybe we can do a live interview on the evening um, when you're actually there. I can record it and then I can host it up on the Demonologist UK page afterwards, if that's okay. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. No, we'll definitely sort that out. But honestly, Sean, you've been a great guest tonight. I'm, I'm going to have to cut things off now because we're at the 45-minute mark and I've just got a couple of announcements to make at the end. But honestly, you've been a great guest. It's great to have um, you. You're the first American I have on here who's been representing for you guys over there. So it's great to have you on. Awesome. I mean, good luck in the future with the, the, the events at Waverly Hills and the, the Thomas House and that. Uh, I mean, and I have a really, really good Christmas and enjoy your time with your family. Thank you. And you do the same. And um, everyone stay safe over there. Um, hopefully our lives can get back to normal <laughs> yeah i hope i really do hope so but yeah yeah take it easy mate honestly thanks again and you have a good christmas thank you you too all right see you, see you later mate bye. bye so yeah guys that is mr sean irving being the first americans to have on the stream i can't believe he's got waverly hill sanatorium wow that is a mind blower at to deb's it's fine no problem it's great to have you uh it's great to have you lock in better late than never don't forget you can re-watch all the videos from the demonologist uk on my page that's facebook.com forward slash the demonologist uk um you can also check all my podcasts out on spotify on apple on amazon and basically anywhere where you can get a podcast you will find the demonologist uk podcast um yeah that was an absolutely brilliant interview i mean it's great to to have somebody who has a different perspective on things like we were saying about the whole thing about the the native american side of things and kathy was mentioning it. i mean out to kathy and, and robbie and everybody that's been locked in it, it's great to have a different perspective to see a different culture and how a different culture affects what we do in the paranormal even though we're all trying to sort of aim for the same end product um, it's great to see how the cultures can affect it, you know. And I've got to send shouts out to Sean um, for coming on the show tonight. I mean, it's three thirty in the afternoon over there, and he's just finished work. So, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm glad that he's come out. I'm glad that he's come on. Um, at all the Knox uh, Knox County Spirit Chasers as well. I wish you guys good luck. Um, and I am going to set up that interview when he's live at Waverly Hill Sanatorium because I, I think that'll be really, really good. But anyway. So once again, this is my last stream before Christmas. I won't be on over the new year. I'm going to be on the other side of the new year. I think my next stream is on the 8th of January. I'll be streaming live. Also be doing the podcast like we normally do every Friday at 8.30. I've got Spooks and Ghouls Paranormal on, on the 8th of January. Um, I'm really looking forward to that because they actually have an ordained exorcist within their team and we're going to be talking to him about how he affects the investigations. We're also going to be talking to the guys about how they all bounce off each other. And if they're sort of more specialised having an exorcist in the team. But yeah. Out to Kathy. Happy Christmas to you too. Out to everybody. I mean have a really really good Christmas. Um, have a really really good New Year. Stay safe. Because it's getting airy out there. It's very airy fairy. So make sure you stay safe. Once again thank you to Sean Irving. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been locked in and thank you everybody watching this video back have a great Christmas I'm out of here so you guys take it easy you keep it sp spooky and if you want to watch any of the videos back make sure you go head over to the Demonologist UK page on Facebook once again I'm Damon Penny this has been a Demonologist UK podcast I'm signing out take care 